graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. <laughs> Look alive, rage slaves! Presenting that caliph of clowns, that mogul of Mountie Banks, the one and only Joker! Hello, citizens of Gotham! Joker here! You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes, or if you're an Android user, you can always find the Stitcher app for Google. Stick around, because this is just too much fun. (laughs) Stay tuned and find out for yourself. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And this is take three for the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other people at home are not going to hear this, but no, they're not going to hear the first two takes because the first two takes didn't ex- have exactly happen. But we are recording. This is our second episode we're doing together. Sort of like a... Dynamic duo. Yeah. World, <laughs> world's finest Batman meets Superman kind of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're the host of... Well, you're one of the hosts of the Tsunami Faithful Podcast. Uh representing rochester and the boys up here up north new york upstate new york <laughs> and i'm just representing rochester i guess myself originally from new york city but in rochester now um so we've been it took us why oh okay i thought my computer stopped recording again <laughs> and i was like no not again so we've actually been sitting here for like an hour before just half an hour just set up just trying to get the damn computer up and running but it is a brand new computer sponsored. I guess you can call my dad for the third time. I'm going to say this. I can call my dad a sponsor of the show because, uh, you know, I, I've been a little down on my luck. My old computer, which I've recorded probably the last like 10, 15 episodes on was now don't be wrong. Back in 2005, that computer was top of the line. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, here we are in 2013 and hey, whatever works. That's, that's all so I much. care about. And you know, uh, you know, it's a Windows 8. I was kind of giving you like a quick little tutorial on. The things that have changed in Windows 8. I, I don't... It's not bad. I know when people bash Windows 8 and people don't like new things and everyone's like, oh, you know, why change something? But one, the freaking computer boots up a hell of a lot faster. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's you, ha- you kind of have to get a little used to the design and you have to, like, you bring your mouse to the lower right part of the screen. Now, it's also... Uh, this is one of the lower end Windows 8 computers because I'm still not ready for touch screen I'm still, you know, you <laughs> no call, i don't like touch you could call me an old man but to me that just sounds like another thing to have a problem you know what i'm saying <laughs> like the one day you know you know these touch screens one day are going to fail and then you're going to have the computer's going to be like you can go back to the same thing yeah yeah it's like just give me the damn laptop i mean i think we've we've come to perfection i'm not a big fan of like tablets no either am i because my dad was like you know don't get me wrong very generous and i appreciate it and he's like you know, do you want do you want one of the tablets? Now, I, I don't think he because one of the other caveats of getting this laptop is my dad goes, "Don't break five hundred dollars." <laughs> so you know, luckily this was this was on at say, well, it was five fifty technically, but it was a fifty dollar rebate. So you know, I don't think my dad understands. I don't think you're gonna find a tablet under five hundred. You know, what Windows eight right, you know, kind yeah. of a deal. Uh, you know, it's, uh, definitely nothing comparable to an actual laptop. So, you know, my dad was like, oh, if you want, and I'm like, dad, look, thank you. I appreciate it. I don't want to, I don't want a touch screen. I, to me, that's, yeah, no. they haven't perfected it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like the iPad, okay, the iPad is, is one thing, but you know, people don't generally have the iPad like to do computer stuff. Right. You do it to do tablet stuff. And let me tell you, I still, it still boggles my mind when I see people carrying an iPad to use as an mp3 player oh god and i've seen it i've seen it a couple of times <laughs> um you know or even worse a, a camera because you do see a couple a couple of geniuses at a you know uh, and i mean that not like apple geniuses the good ones geniuses and speaking definitely sarcastically when you're, you're like at a live show or something like that yeah and someone's holding up and like if i was at any kind of event that had an i you know that that you're i'm not going to bring my ipad with me i'm too scared of getting it smashed stolen yeah dropped yeah. bill uh, beer spilled on it you know and i don't maybe it's just me and 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 because i a lot i my daughter well my android phone is now dead i let my daughter play with my phone you know and and you know nowadays these things are so um user-friendly that you know they seem to work 
every kid in the world has an iPad now. Yeah. I keep seeing kids with iPads and maybe because I'm broke or maybe I'm just a horrible dad. Who are these people that have money to throw away? I mean, I understand. Like I said, I, I let my daughter play with my phone because it's my phone and I know it's durable and it's covered. Who are these people just buying iPads for four-year-olds? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, cause you see, like, the people, the parents will have one, and then the kid has one. You know, and don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant device, and, 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 and it's okay for a kid to play with, but I can't see buying an iPad for, for, in, a child, and in, right. you know, yeah. I love my daughter very much, and I'm not gonna get her an iPad. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, maybe I'm saying that now, but I just, um, it blows my mind, the, the large proportion of, Small children I see playing with the iPad. Right, yeah. You know, and like, you know, whatever, you know, we, I was happy with a freaking etch, etch a sketch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, these kids are going to grow up so privileged. I mean, and I guess that's a good thing, you know, they're knowing about technology, but, you know, uh, you know, my daughter doesn't, w- is not even going to know the concept of something with actual buttons on it. Everything's going to be right, screen yeah. and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Uh, the big news and was the first thing on my list as soon as you came in you said you know we're going to talk about yep. it right? <laughs> uh, no it's not tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we could somehow get it back to tsunami. but the big announcement everyone went nuts on the internet this week Ben Affleck announced he's going to be playing um, Batman in the next technically in the next Superman movie but yeah Superman we, we know what's going to happen after that but yes and like in our last episode I honestly thought you know, I was like, I thought it was going to be, you know, you get a young guy, get an unknown. Right, yeah. You know, it, it kind of makes sense because in my mind, I'm anticipating more Batman movies, a Justice League movie somewhere down the line. And and I don't think it's a mistake. I mean, a lot of people were freaking pissed off. Like, oh. oh, dang, <laughs> you know, there was such a backlash. Online. It was, it got a little insane, yeah. And I thought, now here's here's my deal, because I thought we were going to go for a young Batman, you know, to kind of be the counterbalance of, of, of Superman or Clark Kent or whatever. But I guess they're going to go with, I mean, of course, and, and not that Ben Affleck's an old man, but no, they're going to go with an older Batman, Bruce, you know, yeah. like, you know, older Bruce Wayne. As they know. said in the, the press release, a more aged Batman, apparently. Yeah. And it's like... Aged crime fighter, whatever. It wasn't what I was anticipating, but n- I can see it now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it helps mold my anticipation. Right, right. Where it's not going to be... I thought it was going to be, you know, two new superheroes. You know, I mean, let's, you know, uh, let's pull out... Let's forget all about the Christian, uh, you know, Christian Bale Batman. You know, let's forget about that trilogy. And, you know, kind of start from scratch where it's two guys, you know, because I mean, with the first Superman movie... He's just learning his powers. He's just having right. his first battles right. as Superman. You know, then I thought, okay, we'd have a, a new Batman. So now we're going to have Batman, kind of, I guess, be a mentor to Superman? Or, or you know, I don't... Well, the, the, the way that I see it is... Well, first of all, obviously, how many times have we heard Warner Brothers go back and forth about doing a Batman versus Superman movie? I mean... Yeah, it's been it's been going back and forth for years and years and years and years. Especially since now we have all the the CGI technology that we have now. Oh, yeah, I mean they they've been going back and forth, back and forth about this for years. I mean, um, the movie that <laughs> best best uh, describes that is um, I Am Legend. If you remember in the beginning of that film, when uh, Will Smith's in Times uh, Square, Times Square mm-hmm. up on the up on Times Square is a, a banner of uh, Superman versus Batman. I think it actually said, if I remember correctly, 2015, which is ironic. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I have to say, like, this choice was kind of... I was kind of on both sides of it, and then mm. I kind of went, okay, this was... There's something else behind this, because because Warner Brothers has been throwing, around, throwing this around a long time, I think that they pretty much said, you know what, we need to have somebody... If we can't get Christian Bale... And obviously, they probably approached him. There's no, oh, yeah. there's, there's no if ands or buts. They approached him probably closely after the last Batman and said, "Hey, look, we're thinking about doing this. Depending on how Superman does, what's your thoughts?" And because obviously, what's his name isn't directing that movie, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, yeah. he's not, he's not I, directing. Yeah, Christian it. Bale and, Chris, and Christopher Nolan were. They're a team, you know right? Yeah, like, like you're not going to get one without the other. And you know, and, and I didn't think about it 
at first, but I also think, you know, what happened along with that movie, that tragedy that happened with the movie too as well. Oh, the, um, the, the, the shooting at the movie theater. I think, oh, that's right, I that's think right. that might have, might have tainted him as Batman a little bit too, in his mind at least, so. Yeah, cause um, he was, um, now I know, I mean, I, I remember seeing like the, he went to go visit people. Oh yeah, no, he did. Yeah. And you know, not that, it, not that it's any way Batman's fault, but I mean, you know, that is kind of a hefty, um, burden you know to think that you know well you created something you helped create something that was supposed to be positive oh yeah and, and you know and then there's this huge tragedy that that's associated with it right and and yeah it makes that it does make a lot of sense to like you know especially actors they're a little more like in touch with their feelings and stuff like that so yeah i could see kind of like bowing out and saying nah you know batman and it was good to me but i'm gonna leave it alone I- i'm sure the 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 higher ups at warner brothers are intelligent enough to go Okay, some people are going to connect this. Let's let's move on and do something else. And you know, plus I I, I kind of think that they've been probably talking to Ben for a while now. Mm-hmm. And I think that Zack Snyder and again because Warner Brothers is very you know they've been throwing this idea around for years and they know they need to get this right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I think they have this idea of what they're going to do with the character. Mm-hmm. And you know, I kind of like the idea of having like a Batman that's probably more experience so to speak than superman because then he kind of can be like the the mentor so to speak um because we've really seen like we really haven't seen kind of that i guess dynamic before yeah. and see I, I i like them to take another dynamic rather than just be like oh look at the world's strongest animated movie let's just take that one and make it a real life movie there you go <laughs> it's like no 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 let's do something different and you know and i could easily i mean i can clearly in my mind see uh ben affleck as bruce wayne oh yeah. i can see him playing the playboy you know can play you know he could he could do the tortured role you know I, you know I, I, you know it, is, it, it, it does blow my mind about the fact that you know now what was once a joke with these superhero movies you know before yeah. but, you know you couldn't get someone to touch a, a, a superhero movie with a 10-foot pole right you know, he just got like you know, for Argo. You know, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's directed, you know, the town, he's gotten all this wonderful praise and, right. you know, and, you know, he's doing a freaking comic book <laughs> movie. You know, Ben Kingsley was in Iron Man 3. Right. You know, I mean, we could talk for days on, on, on these powerhouse people because Ben, I, I, honestly, I thought, after Argo, we would never see him acting in another movie again. You know, right. maybe you know, maybe acting, directing himself, or well, or you know, saying I can't. And you know, here's a guy who j- just walked away with an Oscar a couple right. months ago. <laughs> He's gonna be a freaking bad. <laughs> but well, it shows you the drawing power. Well, also, I mean, you you have to kind of take into a you have to kind of take it into effect that Ben Affleck really hasn't done that much movies the last couple of years. I mean, it's kind of been like it's kind of movies with him have kind of been dry. And then now all of a sudden there's been this resurgence of resurgence of him, yeah. And I think kind of, you know, he is getting up in in age. So I think that something like this also is going to help his career in the fact that, you know, depending on and I'm sure it's part of the contract, whatever he's going to be in Batman wise, he's going to be doing this for a while. Oh yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, let, let's the one thing that I've always said about Batman versus Superman mm-hmm. is that you can't do a Justice League live action movie. Without doing Batman versus Superman first, yeah, because there, it, it doesn't make any sense. You can you can do a Green Lantern movie, you can do a Flash movie, you can do whatever other movies you want, but until you do that movie first, because Batman and Superman were the ones that created the Justice League, yeah, you know you can't really you can't really move on until you do that movie. So I, I think this was the natural uh, progression of this to happen. Yeah. And I've always been saying this for years, so I'm very happy that they did it. It's going to be interesting to see how, um, and we, we talked about this earlier before that we started recording, you know, how he brings in some of the stuff that he did with Daredevil into this movie. And, you know, I'm probably going to hear, oh, you he know, he was, he sucked in Daredevil. Yeah. People bash Daredevil. Man. Oh my and God. We both agree that it, it was, I enjoyed it. I, I, I mean, thought it was great. Dude, any, any superhero that kills somebody in the first scene, I'm like, all right, I'm hooked. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let me get my popcorn. Let me pause the movie. Let me get my popcorn, get my drink. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> and I, and I really thought that he played, he did a really good job. The director did a really good job. I just think like we were talking about earlier, it's kind of like the people around him made the movie bad and i'm not saying like jennifer gardner's character i'm more like the villains were you know 
You know, yeah. and and I know a lot of people will agree with me. Like Michael Clark Duncan, mm. love the man. Rest his spirit. <laughs> yeah, God rest, rest his soul. In peace. <laughs> I, I love the man. He did. He does. He, he's a great actor. There's nothing. I have nothing against him. But Kingpin is a big white guy, <laughs> yeah. not a big black man, and it threw the whole movie off when you saw that. And you're just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I, I don't know if I can sell this. You know, it's like. All right, I guess I can accept it, but yeah, it's part uh, of it's one of those things where they, like you take you know Hollywood trying to be politically correct, and I'm not I'm not trying to be uh, kind of offensive or anything like that. Oh They're no, trying to be politically correct, and then you know they they get other actors to play the characters. You know, I mean, you know, because you know some people need to re- be reminded that the Nick Fury character in the in the Avengers, oh movie, he was white, yeah, he was a white guy. You know, I was like back in the '80s when they kind of made like a cheap, low budget version of a Nick Fury movie. It was played by David Hasselhoff. For yes, Christ it was. Sake. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. um uh, it, it it has its it, it has its um pluses and minuses and my computer just went black but I got a, I guess it's, that was a screensaver coming up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it was the first recording, so we're still working out the bugs, but everything seems to be working just fine. Um, now also now uh, this is purely speculation and 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 you know and as much as you know I was just complaining about this before the episode um, about people who post things online. There are millions of sites out there that that are trying to get traffic going to their site, so um, they will put rumors and stuff like that. And once again, I'm I'm when I'm reporting this, I'm reporting it purely purely as rumor. Um, Brian Cranston uh, allegedly has been has been uh, addressed to be uh, Lex Luthor oh. in the the next Superman movie, and maybe even continuing on. You know, if they do make a Justice League movie, um, I love. I love Breaking Bad. He's a great character. I love him as a bad guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so funny that, you know, you know, he's, he played the goofy dad and Malcolm in the middle. And, you know, I, 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 I mean, it's, I, I want to see a whole, like, it has to be like dynamic and it, it, whatever, whoever the villain, 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 I can't even speak, <laughs> is in this next movie is, <laughs> is in this next movie. It's got to be, you know, this guy's got to hit it out of the park, whether he's Lex Luthor or somebody else, you know? Mm. So they got to go and get these big characters to, you know, obviously hit, you know, yeah, come and, against each other. And, so, um, what was his name? Norm- Norman Fisk was that the name of the character Kingpin's real name? Oh, well, Kingpin. The Norman character. Fisk, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you know, and we have the technology where you could have made a character that is larger than life. I mean, this guy. Oh is yeah, 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 yeah. Freaking, you know, six feet wide on top of being six feet tall. I mean, the guy's like built, supposed to be built. Like, you know, we have the technology where you can build a believable looking character. Oh yeah, that could have been this. Oh yeah. freaking mountain of a man and don't get me wrong i guess you can somehow interpret as 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 uh michael clark duncan as kingpin but i mean you know let, let's try to be you know you can be uh truthful to the comics without being uh parody or you know making it look silly you know and it, it, I, don't, I mean i like michael clark duncan i mean i'm kind of like uh i was a big fan of you know the green mile movies and stuff like that oh yeah it's yeah i agree you know that they could have you know, it's one of those things when you try so hard to be politically correct that sometimes you you end up. Oh, and my cat's almost knocking down everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Ben Affleck uh, as as uh, Daredevil. Oh, and I still didn't even get the kid's name. Um, he's joining a, a, an elite squad of other actors who have played two superheroes in movies. Uh, the two yeah. that come off the top of my head was Ryan Reynolds. He played Deadpool. Well, but you know, a roundabout version of Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool. Deadpool is actually supposedly they're still throwing the idea around, but yeah. And then he got to you know he Green played Lantern. Green Lantern and Chris something or other. I can't believe I forgot his name. Who played Captain America and also played Johnny Storm in the uh, Fantastic Four movies? So you know, it, it's funny that these these characters, these actors. You know, because usually when you get stuck with a, a superhero, not stuck, that's not the right word, but when you get, when you put get into a role like put that, into yeah. a role, you know, you're that person for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Christopher right. Reeve will always be Superman, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, the kid that played Harry Potter is always going to be Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yep. You know, um, but these guys, you know, and then especially like, uh, dead, you know, Deadpool and Green Lantern, Deadpool being, um, Marvel. 
right. Green Lantern being DC, right? And also, you know, Captain America. Oh no, we Captain America. Oh no, I'm sorry, Captain America and Johnny Storm are both. Yeah, they're both Marvel. Marvel. You know, but Ben Affleck also jumping, uh, crossing lines. You know, right? Uh, yeah. Daredevil being Marvel and Batman being DC. So I mean, hey, those those checks clear. So I mean, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to hate on them. You know, and it's, nope. it, it's it wasn't what I was expecting. But I don't, I don't think anybody really expected that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it with, uh, you know. And then, you know, anyone who knows this show knows, you know, I, I, I'm a big Kevin Smith fanboy. You know, I love his movies. I love, you know, I have a freaking autographed comic book on my wall of him, um, my Green Hornet. Yeah. Um, and I also have his, I, I have a copy of his, uh, he did a Batman comics uh, series called, uh, uh, well, there was the first one called Cacophony. And then I have uh, the Widening Gyre. They're actually Cacophony. I have autographed by Kevin Smith and Walt Flanagan, the uh, the artist. Um, but you know, there's a there's kind of a connection there because you know Kevin Smith kind of you know he wrote like one of the earlier drafts of you know Superman movie of a Superman movie back in the late '90s or um, you know Ben Affleck wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for Kevin Smith. Yeah, um, he actually tweeted the other day when the news came out. He's like. Ben Affleck's Batman. I actually saw Batman naked then. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and Kevin Smith, you know, Kevin Smith, you know, has a show called Fat Man on Batman, a, a name of a podcast, which I, you know, of course, thank you for listening to our podcast. But, uh, you know, I love the Fat Man on Batman podcast. And, yeah. uh, you know, so now, here, you know, he, Kevin Smith, who loves Batman, obviously, has in a roundabout way given us. The new Batman. Yeah, <laughs> you know? this is true. And then, you know, probably, you know, with DC finally uh, trying to catch up to the Marvel, you know, Marvel's movie world expectations, universe, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. You know, um, you know, hopefully these movies are going to be done right. You know, with the, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the Dark Knight trilogy was awesome. You know, I mean, they, they're, you know, the Superman Man of Steel was good. You know, so they kind of have their. They're, they're starting to move into a, into in a, a good direction. <laughs> they're starting to move in a good direction, which is good. Um, the one thing that I don't that we need to mention that I don't like is that there's these petitions out there to try to get uh, Ben Affleck not to be Batman. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there going, okay, I think we went a little too far with this, guys. I mean, mm -hmm. let's have a little faith in Warner Brothers and let's see what they're gonna do. If they fuck up. They're gonna pay for it, obviously. If they don't, then you're gonna look bad. Mm -hmm. So let them do it and see what happens. Hey, there were people pissed off that Heath Ledger was gonna play the Joker. Oh, you know God. what I'm saying? And look how that turned out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we couldn't, I couldn't think of anyone better right now, you know? Hey, Batman, th that, the second Batman was, um, it was one of the best superhero movies ever yeah. made. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, you, you have to, and it was Heath Ledger that did that. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, I, I don't know, like, some people say, well, if he didn't die, you know, he wouldn't have won the award or whatever. And it's just like, I still think he would have won it. No, he would have won it. it they, he did a very good job as Joker. Yeah. So. And, uh, and Michael Keaton is, you know, the first Batman, uh, not the first Batman, but, you know, the, the, the original series of movies. Um, you know, Mr. Mom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Beetlejuice, you know, Beetlejuice is yeah. like Batman, you know, but those movies, you know, for the people that like those movies, the first two were the good ones, you know, three and four kind of, three and know, four were you know, okay. Batman and Robin, Batman Forever. Yeah, they were okay. They weren't like anything like extravagant, but yeah, you know, know, Batman, you know, the ba Batman Returns, which is, I guess, technically part two. Um, b was my favorite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Danny DeVito, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, I mean, I wasn't too thrilled with the Catwoman origin story, yeah. but, you know, Danny DeVito, it was such a dark, you know, it took a movie, you know, I mean, now we look at it and it looks a little corny and cheesy, but at the time it was so fucking dark, you know, saying like, you know, Danny DeVito wanted to blow up Gotham, blow up the kids, <laughs> you know, he was thrown away as a child, <clears throat> it was very... It, it, it was a good combination of like horror and comedy and action, you know, and Michael Keaton, you know, you know, let's not forget that Michael Keaton, Mr. Mom, Beetlejuice is, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, playing Batman and, and no one complains about that. You could complain about all those movies. No one, no one could complain that, that Michael well, Keaton was a bad Batman. I, I would say, I would say that if we're looking at how good Batmans were, like Michael Keaton was definitely the best one out of all of them. And I would say Christian Bale is like the second one. I'll give you that. I mean, uh, Michael Keaton was one of the things that you found out because a lot of people were like, well, why didn't he do three? Why wasn't he involved in four? And like, you know, one of the things that he came out and said, he's like, 
they gave me a script. Mm -hmm. I looked at it and I said, I don't like where Batman's going. Mm -hmm. You know, and and for me, that was kind of hearing that kind of thing was like, okay, this guy really wants to sell the character. And I, and I believe he actually, they actually did ask him about like the whole new, you know, Dark Knight series and everything. And Mm -hmm. he actually liked the way that Batman was going in these, I believe. I would have to look it up and I could be wrong, but you know, also with Tim Burton leaving, you know, there is, there are some actors that, you know, was, you know, some actors will stay loyal to the director because, oh, yeah. you know, you do these first two movies, which were so big and, and, you know, the first movie, forget about it. I mean, I remember, you know, Batman fever was everywhere, you know, oh, yeah. guys are getting the freaking symbol shaped in the back of their head. And, you know, you, you're part of this big cultural event. And then you say, OK, well, Tim Burton's not going to be involved with the third one. Right. Well, that kind of leaves Michael Keaton in the space. Like, you know, like, you can't, you know, do you go, I mean, you, you know, you, do you go with your principles or deal with the paycheck? You know, and that's time right. like that. Sometimes you go with your principles, you know, because, uh, you know, had he been involved with the third one, you know, it was, you know, they kind of, you know, then it started getting a little more cartoony, you know? Yeah. It was- after, after Dark, or after, uh, Batman Returns, I was going to say Dark Knight. Um, <laughs> They, it, it kind of went into like that cartoonish kind of direction. I'm like, uh, yeah, Tommy Lee uh, Jones, who's a great actor. Oh, yeah. You give him this ridiculous makeup and, you know, the idea of Two Face, he has this exact line in the middle of his face. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Perfectly it's straight. It's really line. so weird. You know, Tommy Lee Jones, <clears throat> you know, had you, had you t- took that movie in a little bit of a darker direction, or should I say a lot more darker direction, a great actor like Tommy Lee Jones, and I love Jim Carrey. I'm like, I like Jim Carrey's movies. I mean, as ridiculous right. and stupid as they are, you know, uh, Liar Liar, uh, uh, Me, Myself, and Irene, uh, uh, what's the other one? You know, even like the Ace Ventura movies, they're so ridiculous, but they're funny right. as hell. Um, but you could have made, you could have made that movie a very dark, twisted, Movie, you know, saying like, you know, Jim Carrey's played dark in a couple of movies, you know, John, Tommy Lee Jones, you know, you could have easily, and even Val Kilmer as Batman, you know, saying that you could have made that movie a heck of a lot darker. Oh, yeah. And it would have been, it would have dropped people's jaws on like, you know, cause that, oh, was, right. that was still, no. I mean, that was a time where Batman was dark, but not, it was dark, dark, but you know. No, it was cartoon dark. It wasn't yeah. like dark. It was like cartoon dark. And you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it could have been. An excellent movie. I mean, look at, it, it's kind of funny because you, you talk about like Batman. You look at Chris O'Donnell, who's now on, uh, NCIS, um, NCIS. LA? LA, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> you look at him every time. Every time I look at him, I start laughing and I'm just like, what's up, Robin? How are you? <laughs> because you, you, when you establish that actor with that one character, you're, he's going to be established for the rest of his career. <laughs> and yeah, okay, fine. A lot more people that have not seen the film, put him in the category of his character on NCIS LA. But, you know, for me, seeing him before, I just sit there and I laugh. It's just like the same thing with LL Cool J. He's a rapper. I don't, yeah. I don't establish him with a serious actor. I s- establish him with this rapper that has been around for years. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. He's cause I think he, he's like, he's, he, I think he's like late forties now, but he's been rapping. He's been like, a, he's been a professional rapper since he was like 16 years oh, old. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. More than half his life, you know? And, um, what I was going to say, uh, well, uh, if mentioning Robin, uh, someone had posted a funny picture online. I'm pretty sure it's not an actual quote, but it was a picture of Matt Damon looking really pissed off. Oh, yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, I yeah, will yeah. not be playing Robin. So <laughs> stop asking. <laughs> Cause that would have been, I mean, enough, had they didn't, had they gotten to that point, it would have just been really ridiculous. But, oh, they've uh, been throwing it around. Oh, you should be Joker. Oh, you should be this. And I'm just like, stop. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. Please. Let the people, and not that, you know, he has his own merits, but I mean, not, you know, not, not just because he's Ben Affleck's friend or whatever. That's, you know, right. Like, yeah. There's a million good actors you can And we don't, there, and, and see, the other thing is too, is we don't know if this Batman outside of the Superman movies is mm-hmm. going to be have his own thing. We would assume that that's what's going to happen, but this could be just a Batman that's involved in the Superman movies. We don't know. And the Justice League movies, obviously. So we, we don't know what direction Warner Brothers is going in yet. So And uh, once again, totally speculating, I think it's going to be, it's not going to be as dark as the Christopher Nolan movies. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, I think, I think Superman was a lot darker than all those other <laughs> Superman movies. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that scene at the end there. Yeah. Uh, the Superman doesn't do that. So. Yeah. That was, yeah. No, yeah. This is a, that so that was pretty dark for Superman. So I, and remember, he is an executive producer. So. 
Yeah, I don't. I just because I mean because we kind of had. I mean, you know, you, you had years of like a lighthearted Batman because like before the nineteen eighty nine eighty nine movie, everyone kind of remembered Batman as being like this corny. You know, the Adam West nineteen sixty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the eighty nine one made it a little dark. You know, the 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 Christopher Nolan one made it real dark, <laughs> really dark. And I know it's gonna. I I I don't know. I have a feeling that the pendulum may swing the other way, and not that he's gonna make him corny or cartoony, but not. As you know, depressing right. as the Christopher Nolan movies. I don't know. That's just well, my speculation. Well, now. I'm kind of hoping that this all leads into um, because they've also been they, not only have they been playing around with the idea of Batman for Sup- Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. um, but they've also been playing around with the idea of doing um, a Batman Beyond movie. Now, obviously, Batman Beyond has been done for a couple years, mm-hmm. so people have kind of forgot about that incarnation of Batman but you know I'm kind of hoping I, I really want to see that movie I, oh, I'm really be... oh. and you could transition so easy into that because you know by the time they get to it right. they have to have a Batman movie they have to have you know then they have to have this Justice League by the time they get to it Ben Affleck can be an older gentleman that you know is yeah. is too physically beat up to wear the costume anymore. Yeah, you know and, and I'm kind of hoping that we get to that kind of stage because I want to see Batman Beyond. I've, I've, it, it was a great idea when they threw it out there, and they just couldn't put it together. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, was, why? You know, it it has so much potential, and it is, from what I understand, it is back in and um, right now. I believe it's it's a digital comic, and what they're doing is after they get to like issue three or four. Then they're going to put it out as a print comic, Batman okay. Beyond. There's a, there's a, if I'm not mistaken, that's that's the way I understand it right now. Well, as for as for actually what DC's putting out, and I am like, I loved, I loved Batman Beyond. I would, I can't, I would, I, if they were behind it. I mean, obviously the right people behind it, not just some way to cash in. Right. It would be so ridiculously awesome. You have the CGI <laughs> to do it now. It's oh. it's perfect. And and the thing is too is like. Um, when they were thinking about it, one of the rumors was, and I don't remember if this was ever confirmed, but they were actually going to use George Clooney as, Bruce, well, obviously, Bruce Wayne again, uh-huh. and have him be the older Bruce, which would have made sense. Yeah, it would have a transition right. Through. Right, but then it was just like, okay, well, make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing around, just make the movie. And I think Ben Affleck, I mean, once again, with because he does kind of have, like, I, I would say, you know, genuine roots being an associate of, of Kevin Smith and stuff like that, you know, that he, he's ready for the long haul. He's ready, you know, we're going to oh, be yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Ben Affleck as Batman. Hopefully, I mean, uh, knock Hopefully. on wood, well, you know. Uh, I don't know some <laughs> Hopefully Batman, we're not going to play this uh, every, new Batman every single movie kind of deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised 10 years from now. It's still like, okay, well, now we're going to make the Batman Beyond right, movie or yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, I can't believe we spent like a half an hour talking about Batman. Yes, we did. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be right back. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. Pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click dash the letter n dash hit.com that's click and hit.com and now for listeners of two strangers one podcast you can use promo code strangers and receive 10 percent off your purchase at click and hit.com that's promo code strangers for 10 percent off your purchase and we're back all right so um star wars 
Star, you know, you will, you, because <laughs> you we were talking before the show, you're talking about Star Wars trending on, on, oh, yeah. Um, Star Wars obviously debuted on Toonami about a week ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it just played this last Saturday because we're recording on Sunday, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it's interesting because we've been, you know, my website, which is ToonamiFaithful.com, we've been trying to, uh, get them, get like some kind of like acknowledgement from Star Wars mm-hmm. official, like saying, hey, it's on Toonami, so people will actually watch and it'll increase the ratings. Because to us, that's a big thing, and it's big to the block, because obviously, the mm-hmm. more ratings, the higher the ratings, the bigger the budget. That's the, what we want to see. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> it, it was kind of funny, because we chose a hashtag, which was Star Wars uh, TCW, which stands for the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. um, and it trended in the US, it trended worldwide on Twitter, and I'll get to why trending is really important in case people are like what the hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> but um also it was interesting because the word star wars also trended as well so it was kind of like and they were both worldwide so it's like <laughs> do you want to say something do you want to say it's on tsunami i mean you got dvd sales coming up in october where they you release season five i mean do you want to acknowledge that it's on there <laughs> i mean come on now <laughs> so you know, it was interesting to see that this week because we had talked about it the last episode. Now, when it's on tsunami, is this? It's so it's. Is it a new season or is it? No, it's just um, it's going back from season one. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't. Oh, so that that's. Oh my god, that's awesome! Yes, I it is because last night well, we we were both online, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have cable. Right now. <laughs> so you're like, oh, you're watching tsunami, and I'm like, uh, I don't have cable. <laughs> I'm paying the ten dollar. I feel bad for you, sir. For just the you know the, the <laughs> local channels, but I was not aware. Okay, you know that you know, and for me, who's like a quote unquote Star Wars geek, I was not aware that they were starting from the beginning, which oh, yeah. is smart because if you know, obviously, people who watch tsunami are into fandom. Right, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't right. be into tsunami if you weren't, nope. you know, in that world, that realm of like being a loyal fan to a to a franchise. So if you're starting from the beginning, that is awesome. I mean, I had the I had season one on DVD before I sold it on eBay because I needed money. Um, <laughs> but that is a brilliant move. That, well, from what we were, from what we've seen from some uh, from some Q and As that we've been seeing, I think there was. I don't know if he said it on the Reddit one that was last weekend, but. Um, he had also, they were, they were actively looking for, because it's Adult Swim, obviously, Mm -hmm. uh, they were actively trying to get the uncut version of it, so that way they could, it was something different, you were still seeing Clone Wars, but you were seeing the uncut version. Yeah, from the offer, the late night viewers. But apparently they couldn't get a hold of that, so, you know, what they got is what they got, obviously, Mm -hmm. and they're not gonna be playing, like, every single episode, it'll be, it'll be everything that's, I guess... They use the term filler like animes use. I think I talked about this last time where like filler meaning, you know, Star Wars, you know, we're not going to put the Jar Jar Binks episode yeah. where he's like <laughs> jumping around the screen or yeah. whatever, you know. Or he's a senator or yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which there is, from my understanding, there is an episode about that. Like, you know. Yeah, there's, there's, whole, there's an episode there's where he's. Jar Jar centric yeah. episode, which I get what they're trying to They were trying to make it a little val- validate a little right. bit this ridiculous fucking character. <laughs> so, I mean, it's they're they're doing the right thing with the series and they're they're heavily, you know, advertising this. I mean, they don't have to advertise a show that's at 3 a.m. and they're heavily advertising this along with, you know, Sword Art Online and all the all the big episodes they have on there mm-hmm. of the other shows. So it's you know, it, it, to me, I'm just I'm a little disappointed in Star Wars. I can't say Lucasfilm because technically they're owned by Disney now. Yeah. So I guess I'm I, I'm more I'm more disappointed in Disney because they're the ones that own it now. Yeah. That they're not actively saying, you know, yeah, it's on Toonami, you guys should go watch it and everything. I I get it, you have a new series coming out, new animated series coming out soon. Uh, probably next year I believe it is. Um but you could still acknowledge it and say, Hey, you know, it's here. Oh, by the way, Go pick up our DVD because that's going to help your <laughs> DVD sales. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. your DVD and Blu-ray sales are going to be helped if you put a commercial on Toonami. I'm sorry, yeah, it's the truth. And you know what? I even I, you know it just clicked in my head. I mean, Disney is notorious for um, having like temporary releases of DVDs, like you know, like 
you know, a limited release, I guess is the best way of putting right. it, you know, where like, you better get it now or you're not going to see it in the uh, stores okay. for, yeah, for another yeah. 10 years. So you would think. Well, I always, yeah, I, I always laugh at that because like they, they'll sit there and they'll be like, oh, Beauty and the Beast is not going to, is only going to be out for like one month and then you got to get it. And then like the next year oh Beauty and the Beast is gonna be I'm like <laughs> Jesus Christ will you stop well this is the special uh, you know uh, retro like, you know they went back and redid all the CGI in 3D now you know? <laughs> <laughs> rotoscoped oh, it in God. whatever you want to call it and went yeah. back and you know like we were talking earlier you know the it's computer animated movies and uh, you were talking about Thor. How Thor? Uh, you said Thor looked fantastic in three D. In three D, I was like, I, well, yeah, I mean, a, a good chunk of that movie is CGI anyway. So it's right, kind of, yeah. It's, I mean, relatively easy to just you know have the computer come up with the algorithm of okay, here's you know, here's a big giant <laughs> Bifrost bridge, and here's the yep. Bifrost bridge three inches to the right. You know, <laughs> and put those images together, but um. Which I love how they call it by they call it the Bifrost Bridge and not the Rainbow Bridge, which is why yeah. I grew up calling it the Rainbow Bridge. And I don't know if they were, you know, they worried that it was going to be a little, um, you know, like guys can't get into a movie when you call it the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> oh, that movie! Was, that movie was incredible. I, I, can't, I can't talk enough about Thor. Yeah, but... and it's, it's, once again, I think the movie gets expen- exponentially better after you watch the Avengers. Right. I mean, you yeah. know, and it's weird that you know that. They, I don't know if they did it on purpose or, I mean, well, I mean, there was so much love in the Avengers movie that, you know, that they honored enough of the movie that you can go back and watch the first one and have a new appreciation. And then, of course, the Dark World coming out in a couple months. And, yeah. You know, which is, uh, you know. <laughs> that. I want to see you. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I mean, like, Star Wars is, it's, I, I guess the best way to put it is, is it's, well, I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that Disney hasn't really acknowledged us, mm-hmm. and you know the more I think about it, it's probably more or less because of how they, how Cartoon Network and their stupidity. And again, we could have a whole episode about me bashing Cartoon Network. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want me to do that. Oh but um, put on they, a pot uh, of coffee. And yeah, put on a pot of coffee. Back. Get some popcorn. <laughs> oh, you'll you'll be here for a long time. But um, the the one thing that they did was, and you know, I think I talked about this the other day on the podcast was, you know, they, they just buried these series and star Wars was one of those series that they just buried mm-hmm. and, at in the, in the morning with the kids shows. And it's just like, at that time I'm looking at them, like you have Darth Maul and it's really dark and you're going to put this in the morning with kids shows. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> if I were my, if I were like a mother, I would be on the phone being like, um, cartoon network, get this shit. <laughs> off of my son's TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like right, right before it, it's like Ben 10, you know, it goes, right. It goes yeah. It's like, wait a like, minute. It's like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And then they make Ben 10, a kid's version too. And it's just like, really, <laughs> really, we're going to do this now. Really? <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ, just stop, stop already. But anyways, let me, let me not get into that. Cause I'll be here for five hours. <laughs> um, it, it, it's just, it's just interesting to see how, how well, I mean, the ratings for it was, and, I, and I'd have to look it up, but I believe it was 725,000 viewers, which is good at 3 a.m. Yeah. And it, and it may have been number one in its time slot. I'd have to look that up, because I don't think I, I saw anything about that. But, um, you know, to me, like, I would like to see more... I would like to see the, the people at Star Wars and Disney just give us some kind of more... Just, just mentioning it once on your Twitter account or Facebook is going to do a lot more than you just being silent on the issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, ugh. It they're just probably, annoys yeah, me. They're probably, they're probably focusing on their other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, on what they're working on in the Oh, future, yeah, yeah. You know With uh, like, episode is... seven and, like, the yeah. Star Wars, is it Rebels? I think it's I Rebels. I believe it was Star Wars Rebels, yeah. Because I remember yeah. you, uh, you had mentioned it and I looked it up. Yeah, it was Star Wars Rebels and it was, it was it's their... Um, actually, I believe, cause I was, I was, there was, there was gonna be a project called Star Wars 1313, which was supposed to be a live action one. Yeah. I believe that got scrapped. If I read the, what if I read was online, uh, Star Wars Rebels is gonna be another CGI show. But. Right, that's basically what it is. It's, it's that live action show that they couldn't do, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I think it probably had to do something. to do a live action, you know, like, a oh, Star yeah. Wars live action without, TV series? without uh... the giant budget of a movie studio behind it. Right. You know, it would, uh, you know, 
they wouldn't do it justice. You know, no, they wouldn't CGI do it is perfect. I, right. you know, that's like, you know, and you know, you get a lot of animators, you get a lot of people behind it. You could, you know, once you have the models, the models are in the system forever, and you know, just you know, all right. you have to do is just have creative people come up with cool new moves to put the models in or whatever, <laughs> you know, and do it, you know, give it, the, you know, like the Clone Wars where obviously all the people who are working on that were people who grew up with a love and passion, you know what I'm saying, and not just, well, you know, giving it the... I, I also think that, like, like the whole reason for, like, Lucas selling it, and again, I'm not Lucas, so I can't really speculate for him, but, you know, I, I think part of the reason he sold it to Disney was because there's so much that, with the money he has, he can't do. So, you know, and with everybody continually, and and I, I think it has been something that's been growing over the years about having more Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think this was, this was a good move, and I think that, it, you know, it'll provide for his kids, obviously. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, but, you know. Is it four billion dollars? I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he only, he only, like, donated this much to a charity, so, I mean, it's just like, you know, I, I, again, I. Or a billion dollars. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> this a lot. Is true. You know, is you know, uh, and I know. I mean, he just got married. I want to. There's something. What's some, is his wife pregnant now or something like that? I, I think, have no I idea. think they announced the what. I mean, you know, I, I think I, I want to say I want to. She might. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. <laughs> I mean, I know he just got married. Yeah, he's got other. He's got other things on his plate. I mean, you got this, uh, you know, a literal and figurative empire. Sitting on your shoulders, and when you get to a certain age, you don't want to bother with that. And you know, oh no, like, no! You know, let other people handle it. The people with passion, people who grew up with it, people who want to do right by it. You know, and not that he didn't, but you know, you know. Oh, and, I, and I'm sure, and I'm sure, all that on your shoulders, you know. And I'm sure he's had, he's told Disney, you have to do certain things, and if you don't do those certain things, I'm taking it back, kind of deal. Yeah, and then, and, and well, he's he's they're keeping him on as some sort of. Advisor, consultant. Or consultant. Yeah. yeah, okay. You're just going to put your thing into it. Just yeah, shut up and just do it, okay? You know, sit, you know, <laughs> sit in your plush couch or re- recliner with your THX surround sound and sit with your wife, <laughs> hold her hand. You know, I, I don't think... I, I'd have to look, but I don't think he owns... They, I don't think Disney owns um, Skywalker Sound, though. Well, that's what I'm saying, is that, I mean, as in... Um, for him to just kick back, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, you know, right, right, like, right, you know, right. You know, listen to you, you know, you know, you, you probably have, you know, well, just well, go, look go at, relax, go retire. You I mean, it. and, and this, was, <laughs> this wasn't really out of the realm either. I mean, because Disney took Pixar from him, mm-hmm. you know, and they started taking more stuff from him, and then they're just like, whatever, we'll just take Star Wars, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, whatever, let's just, let's just take all your stuff, why not? I don't, like I said, I don't know if they have Skywalker sound. I would imagine that's probably was part of the deal, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Yeah. You never know anymore. And and really, what movie nowadays doesn't go through industrial light and magic? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like that's you know every blockbuster movie, every one of them does through. it now. Yeah, you know, and it's funny that the, you know we were this kind of give us a little bit of a of a, a segue. Even Star Trek was <laughs> yeah <laughs> had had its uh, computer graphics and stuff like that done through industrial light and magic which you know for all you know the the big old you know coke versus pepsi uh you know argument star wars versus star trek you know we're all under the same umbrella now i mean oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's it's all going to end up being under the same thing at once yeah. i mean we've heard i've heard like them sitting there saying oh we're going to do something involving marvel and star wars on i'm like don't do that. I hope that's just a rumor. Just don't do that, please. <laughs> not, uh, not in a serious, you know. Because I mean, I've they. Oh, there was they're doing a, a Phineas and Ferb thing with Marvel, and then I think they're, I think they were teasing doing a Star Wars one too. So and if you did it lighthearted, yeah. you know, what I'm saying like, um, there was there was this, there was a series. It was only online, if I'm not mistaken. It was called Star Wars Detours, and they kind of took like it was a computer animated thing, and it was kind of. Uh, you know, it, you know, they, you have Darth Maul, but Darth Maul with a giant head and, and you know, doing goofy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Goofy, uh, you know, uh, coincidentally goofy. You know, if you, if you do it something lighthearted, it could be funny. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, you can see, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, Darth Maul and Jack Skellington and, you know, <laughs> and Captain Jack Sparrow and <laughs> saying like, right. I, you know, I can see something, you know, goofy like that, you know, and then technically they meet Wolverine or something like that. And a yeah. lighthearted, like a superhero squad, kind of a goofy kind of a way, you know, and you have a lot of, you know, but not anything serious. Like, no, 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 no. Have fun with it. Just, you know, be <laughs> silly. You know what I'm saying? Let, you know. I remember 
like, because there's always Star Wars things out there. Like, I remember there was this one, um, what was it? There was this, some guy, like, because a bunch of people out there, huge Star Wars filmmakers that, that make fan made films. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this one where this guy comes out of the theater, comes out of the theater, turns and goes down an alley. And, um, he walks down to this alley and he sees, I believe it's, there's a, just a lightsaber sitting in the middle of the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the alleyway. And he goes to pick it up and he actually, it's an actual real lightsaber. Mm-hmm. He's like, this is cool. And then all of a sudden Darth Vader comes out of the darkness, starts fighting him and chops off his hand. And the guy goes running off like a little bitch. <laughs> oh, I lost my hand, whatever. So, and then all of a sudden Darth Vader <laughs> pulls out a, pull, has this case, this like suitcase takes it out there's another lightsaber in there he puts it on the ground puts the other one that was just used in the suitcase Mm -hmm. and then goes back into the shadows (laughs) (laughs) and i'm just sitting there going oh my god i'd have to look it up on youtube but that was like it it was one of the funniest things i've ever seen but i I know what you're talking about like something like that yeah i mean yeah if you keep it lighthearted, right you know you know you can have you know i can you know you could do you know darth vader meets Doctor Doom meets, you know, oh God. Uh, you know, uh, Ursula from the Little Mermaid movie. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, that would be kind but of. They've funny. been doing like, there's, um, I can't think of what the uh, the name of it is, but they've been doing like these versus things. Like, for example, there was a Batman versus Wolverine, mm-hmm. um, and Batman lost because Wolverine apparently is better than him. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then there was one where it was uh, Superman versus Goku. Mm-hmm. From uh, Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. and everybody that they w- once that got over with, and everybody saw it, they're all like, "Oh, this this shit is this isn't real," blah blah blah. And I'm just like laughing. I'm like, you know, but something I understand what you mean. Like some some kind of like bringing that lightheartedness together. Like having like, for example, um, let's see, Marvel. We're talking about, let's say Thor versus. Let's see, Star Wars, uh, Luke Skywalker, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. And you know damn well that, like, Luke Skywalker shouldn't beat this guy. <laughs> but he's got the force powers. Let's see what happens, yeah. kind of thing, you know. And remember, and, 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 uh, Disney also owns the Muppets. So, like, <laughs> you could, you know, I think they actually put that, wait a minute. Thor versus Animal, you know, from yeah. the, <laughs> the Muppets, you know, saying yeah. versus, you know, I mean, you could, as long as you could have something that's lighthearted and I'd say embrace it, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, yeah, and then you know now it's gonna be you know you go you go to Disney World and you're gonna be able to buy Wolverine claws and Hulk fists and, and you're gonna be Doc able to Vader fly in the Spider Man ride and yeah. the, whatever. <laughs> You know, and, you know, you're gonna see a kid with Hulk fists and a Darth Vader helmet, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I can't think of you know something from the Muppets. <laughs> Vader smash, <laughs> Vader smash. That would be funny. That would be hilarious. Darth Vader with an accident with gamma rays. Then if he can't reach you, he uses his force powers to bring you in. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> so like this big giant Boom. head with the mask just like barely hanging on. Yeah. <laughs> and so you know, it's. Uh, That'd be funny, you know, he's like regular Darth Vader, and he'd be like, you won't like me when I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> it just break. The only thing that's left is the mask, and like uh, everything else is just green. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I smash you! Smash. <laughs> that's, um... You can't even cut him with the lightsaber. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and earlier, we were talking, you know, we bring it all back together. Uh, Thor was played by Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Was also Kirk's dad in, yes. uh, the... the well, I don't. I, I guess you can't say spo- spoiler alert for the first. Uh, well, not spoiler. I guess you can. Say, Chris Hemsworth briefly plays Kirk's dad in. The, yeah, in I mean, the you should have seen the first Star Trek, Star Trek one. Yeah, by now. So. Um, now, uh, the, so just you know, bringing back characters that kind of played uh, different people. John Favreau, who was actually the guy who directed the first two Iron Man movies. Played and also in all three of the movies played Happy Hogan, which is uh, Tony Stark's uh, assistant, boxing kind of, yeah. boxer, bodyguard, assistant, whatever. Um, also played uh, Matt Murdock, you know the Daredevil, the associate, uh, his his lawyer friend or whatever the you know it was involved <laughs> in, the, in the practice with them. So I mean, there's a lot of characters that are kind of you know uh, that have played different roles in different comic book movies so, and once again well no 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 marvel is yeah marvel was daredevil and um iron man and just john favreau i'm just a big fan of and uh so also uh coming out i, I think this week machete kills 
which I'm kind of like excited for. I don't know if it's this week. I think Is it's it? it's coming, but I don't know when exactly it's oh. supposed to be out. Oh, okay. And and I've just been I mean, uh, Sofia Vergara from uh, you know, from a bunch of things, I guess yeah. Modern Family. I've never wa- I've never seen an episode of Modern Family. Um I'm trying to remember, you know, she's been in a bunch of things. She's just gorgeous. Um she has a bullet shooting bra. Oh, yeah. The, I think they, she calls it the Ah, oh, the double D gun or something like that. So she has a bra that shoots bullets. And then I realized, you know, because Machete Kills is, is directed by Robert Rodriguez, who also directed Planet Terror with, you know, the, the, the grindhouse movie with, uh, Rose McGowan having a rifle as a, as a leg when her leg gets cut <laughs> off. Um, Robert Rodriguez, who also directed Dust Till Dawn, had that character Sex Machine, which is played by the, the Tom Savini, the guy who's like a special effects artist, where it, it's a cod piece. It's, a, you know, it's on his crotch, but it has oh, a gun God. that comes out. Yeah. You know? Um, and I mean, not so much, uh, a body part, but, uh, even the, uh, in the Desperado movie or movies, uh, the big guitar case that turns into a rocket launcher. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Some Robert Rodriguez likes guns that, uh, Aren't come out of every like place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that he, doesn't sound right, people. Yeah, the like guns. <laughs> yeah, you got a leg that shoots, a crotch that shoots, breasts that shoot, a guitar oh, case God. that shoots. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez is a is a is a, is an entertaining man, and also in Machete Kills. And this is I, you know, I'm gonna sound like a dirty old man. Uh, the girl from Spy Kids, because he also directed Spy Kids. Well, she's now all grown up. Yep, and she is sexy as hell, and uh, so online uh, there's a picture of her and basically, what's a le- basically it's a leather bikini with leather chaps. Yeah, and oof. <laughs> she, you know what I'm saying? I mean, okay, you know, I'm not talking about back when she was doing the Spy Kid movies. I'm not. We're, a, I'm we're not doing a, a podcast. Person. Please don't come all over everything. Okay, <laughs> you know she she looks. Good, you know. I mean, you know I mean, it feels weird when you say, you know, the girl from the Spy Kid movies or whatever. But then again, I mean, ladies, don't you know? For the three girls that actually listen to this podcast, um, <laughs> three girls. don't get mad at me because freaking Shark Boy and Lava Girl, uh, Shark Boy, what's his face from the Twilight movies? You know, girls are going crazy over him. Yeah. So, you know, before you call me a dirty old man for for, I'm not looking at the Spy Kid movies. I'm saying uh, Alexa Vega is her name. She's all grown up now in the Machete Kills uh, movie, part two of the Machete. Uh, she looks good. Lady Gaga is going to be in the movie. Yes, she is. is. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, she's playing a character called La Chameleon, which you know, I you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'll give her her shot. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, which you know, and this is going to sound weird. You know, uh, anyone who's listened to the show, and at the end of the show, you'll hear. Um, you know, I wrote a book a while back, you know, it's called Double Jackpot, www.doublejackpot.us. And <laughs> shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> and right if you buy the book, go visit tsunamifaithful.com. Um, that being said, um, there's a character in my book called, N- her, the character's name is Nydia, who is like, you know, there's a, it's a love triangle in my story. And the Nydia character, in my mind, I can see being played by Lady Gaga. <laughs> so, you know, just, you know, uh, hopefully when I become famous enough or whatever, and hopefully it'll be soon. So, you know, they'll give me, they'll let me be the director of the, <laughs> the director of the movie based on the book that I wrote. Um, I can see Lady Gaga playing the Nydia character, which mm. is, you know, for the, you know, uh, once again, go out and buy my book and see how she fits in. No, but seriously, like I, you know, like I see her character because she's my, the character Nydia is such an oddball that Lady Gaga would be perfect for her. I'm just, saying, right. you know. I hope she, I, basically I hope she's a good actress because if I go and make my movie, you know, I need her to be a good actress, you know. I can't have shitty actors. Sorry, you're a shitty actor. I can't have you. Sorry. <laughs> but you know, I, you know, take away all the craziness. I mean, she's a girl from New York City, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I grew up with girls. Oh, like we see that. where this is going now. Yeah. I see where this is going. Well, no, I mean, you know, just, you know, she's, she's eccentric, but she wants, you know, she wants that attention. And not there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. You know, I don't want to go, ah, I heard your podcast. You know, like <laughs> but Lady Gaga, give me a call. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe with her, maybe with her pulls, she could get my, my book made into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I'll give you the role of Nydia. I oh, promise. God. It's a good role. No. <laughs> um, oh, uh, and that's my phone. And apparently, we're getting a phone call. Oh, it's Lady Gaga calling me right now. <laughs> okay. As I, he drops the phone, I may have to edit this part out. Let's see what this. 
Oh, okay. And let me just pause it. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Pod, uh, podcast, podcast is interrupt us. As uh, Jose would say, podcast said it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, that yeah, was, was just my roommate, roommate just making sure. Are you guys still recording? Yeah, we're still recording. Um, well, we are, we are we're coming up on, a, on our mark in a couple minutes, but, um, just a couple of the things I wanted to just get off the top of my head. Um, on Netflix, I came across a show called Better Off Ted, which I've never, I've never heard of before Netflix. I, re- I kind of remember seeing it on the, on the program guides. It was on ABC, and um, for anybody out there who has Netflix or whatever, and I believe that even the set is out there, it is a hilarious, hilarious show, and I just, I'm bringing it up because it's one of those things where, like, you come across it, and you're like, what the hell is this? And, um, my God, it's a good show. It's funny as hell. So I just, I, I had that in my notes. Um, we were talking about, uh, well, we weren't really talking about Duck Dynasty. I've never seen an episode. <laughs> But, you know. You mean the series that me and you don't like? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never seen it, so I can't say if I like it or not. I've, I've, okay, I've watched like five minutes one time, and I really wasn't investing any uh, really attention to it. But, you know, if the people from Schick, you know, I can watch me bring this back to a nerd thing. The people from Schick had a big advertising campaign this summer about the Man of Steel, how does he shave? Yeah. You know, there was a big deal, and, you know, they had like Bill Nye's. Brilliant campaign uh, slogan, might I add, too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, of course, growing up watching the Superman animated series, he shot lasers into the mirror and then the, bounced off the mirror and burned his own hair off. Um, you know, the other, uh, theories, cause they, they had Bill Nye the science guy, they had Mayan Bialik from, uh, Big Bang Theory and Blossom, and, um, Kevin Smith were all doing their, oh, and, um, the Mythbusters. And, uh, they were all have their theories on, uh, who, so, like the, the Mythbusters Buster said, uh, I think like, like he, he's, he's so, so fast, fast that he could individually pinch each hair and pull it out. out. That, was that was a little too much. Too much. <laughs> um, Bill Nye, the science guy basically said like he grinds it down with some sort of like, uh, like a grinder, you know, cause even though, you know, he's not, he's, he's made of steel, but you could still grind down steel. Uh, Kevin Smith said that he, he broke a piece off his ship and it was such a, it was such a sharp piece that he uses that to shave with. And, uh, I forgot what man, Mayan Bialik said. But you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a spoiled, spoiled by the cartoon. The cartoon, the cartoon, cartoon he shot, shot his eyes into. But then, then again, again, you would go, well, well if he shot, shot his eyes into the mirror, wouldn't it melt the mirror? I guess. I, I, I personally <laughs> think we should go with that he had a kryptonite uh, shaver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was from Schick. Yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah. 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 Schick. Um, <laughs> yeah no, 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 Schick people want to advertise with us to be more, you know. And and like I said, I mean, I'm surprised that they haven't. Like, like done, done like, like a, a, a duck, duck dynasty, dynasty like you know you, you guys, guys shave your beards, beards we'll give them a million dollar million yeah. dollars I mean, I mean of, course of course they're already well off well they don't, they don't need, need the money but you know, you know I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure you know those, those guys, guys shave. Shave. but then but again if they shave their beards people people probably won't even recognize you know like what the hell am I watching there's a bunch of guys with you know southern accents in the room I need an adult uh that's, That's pretty, pretty much, much it. it. I mean, I mean everything, everything else is, because well, we were, we're talking, talking about, uh, Fantastic, Fantastic Four, but it wasn't really, really a big thing. thing. We just, you know, Jessica Alba, Alba is hot. hot. Um, <laughs> That's pretty, pretty much the, the gist, gist I got on that. that. Um, oh, there was a funny, there was a funny bit recently. Uh, Harrison Ford was on, uh, the Conan O'Brien show. And, uh, Conan said, I, you know, can you give us any spoilers about Star Wars? And, and he literally, literally pulls, pulls into his pocket, pocket and the camera zooms, zooms in and he, and he has a thousand dollars, you know, ten, one hundred dollar bills. And I mean, I don't, I don't think those was a prop. And, and he, he gives it to Harrison Ford, Ford and he goes, well, now you have, have to tell me spoiler, spoiler. I'm paying you, <laughs> you know, and of course, you know, Harrison <laughs> Ford duck, duck, ducks, ducks the whole answer or whatever. whatever. But, you know, yeah, I, it was pretty funny. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's, you know, he's probably bound contract wise. He can't say. Oh, yeah. But it was, you know, there is a clip out there for people. And it is, I'm not going to tell you what he says because it's pretty funny. So if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, look up Conan O'Brien, um, which I'm pretty sure is like on teamcoco.com or whatever. Um, so we, once again, we're past the hour mark. Uh, this, you know, and in a good way, it's been an incredibly freaking nerdy episode. Uh, you can find everything you need to know about both our shows, our podcasts on, uh, on, well, first about this show that you're listening to right now, <laughs> two strangers, one podcast.com, where you'll find links to everything, our eBay page. Um, once again, I've been so incredibly busy that I haven't had a chance to put anything up on eBay, but keep coming back so we can, if you want, if you enjoy the show and you want to support it, um, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two strangers, one podcast. 
um, like us, hover over the like button, click show in news feed. And uh, unfortunately, you don't get every one of our updates, but that's because Facebook's policy, not ours. Um, if you want to email us anything, you can email us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Um, of course, we're available on iTunes. You subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone, iPad, iPod, you can uh, download the episodes from two strangers one podcast.com. Or you can, uh, if you have an Android device, Android phone, Android tablet, you can find us on the Stitcher app, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Um, pretty much, you know, all the big podcasts, you know, the, the ones that are always top 10 are also on there. You know, Kevin Smith's po- uh, Smodcast, uh, The Nerdist, uh, NPR, This American Life, all those wonderful podcasts. Wait, wait, my podcast isn't on there. And it's <laughs> not. It's, I, I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna sit down with you. We're gonna get that taken care of. Yes, we are. We're gonna get the Toonami Even though on Stitcher. So hopefully, so keep coming back and check out. And you know, you, when you favorite, uh, when you favorite podcasts, when an update comes, it updates on your phone. So, uh, you know, once you favorite Two Strangers One Podcast, make sure you also favorite the Toonami Faithful Podcast. And, um, you know, a big shout out to our brothers, uh, my, my, my boys out in the West Coast, Living Lane Podcast Entertainment, L-I-V-I-N-L-A-M-E Podcast Entertainment. Um, you know, the breakdown, which is their music show. Um, I just put out an episode last night of Chris's Hidden Metal Show on the breakdown feed. Uh, Real Chat, uh, the Fox Den, uh, Down in Derby. And of course, the big daddy that started all, Living Lame, L I V I N L A M E. Check them out. They're my brothers from another mother on the West Coast. Um, and that's about it. Uh, so if you, you could, uh, I know I have a lot. I, you know, I have to like close my eyes and remember all the nonsense I have to say. But you know, he was inspiring me. It's one of those things where it's like you know, like I mean, my, you know, uh, you know, we've with this show, you know, we've done interviews in the past, and and. Uh, every, every episode, episode might be somebody's, somebody's first episode. episode. So yeah. I, I always get all that stuff out at the end because if this is the first episode you've ever heard of Two Strangers One Podcast, you know, I encourage you, please go and check out the other ones. You know, this is, we have fun and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing the show if I wasn't having fun. I mean, yeah, it's a little nerdy, but I mean, you know, that's, that's whatever. Who we are and you gotta love us for it. Um, so, uh, uh give us, uh, if you want to give us the rundown of the tsunami faithful, <laughs> I feel so I feel so overwhelmed by all your stuff. Yeah, it, it's a lot of information. Just go to two strangers on podcast dot com. Um, well, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pascrillo. That's the most important one. Um, my account is private, so if you follow me and I like your tweeting, your tweeting, I will let you follow me. But please be warned, I do get a little vulgar on there. <laughs> and uh, you can. Um, the most important thing is the podcast, uh, podcast.tsunamifaithful.com. Uh, you can get all of our episodes on there as well as any of our exclusives, which we also put on Podomatic as well. Uh, iTunes link is there as well, and so is our Facebook page, which is uh, Facebook pa- facebook.com slash Tsunami Faithful Podcast, as well as um, our Twitter page, which is uh, at Tsunami Podcast, because we're the best Tsunami Podcast. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> so and then you can also, obviously, um, I mentioned it earlier in the show, TsunamiFaithful.com. Uh, if you're a huge Tsunami fan, if you're a huge Star Wars fan, you know, whatever show is on Tsunami you're a huge fan of, I encourage you to follow, or not follow, but come on to our website. We have a lot of interesting articles. We follow the ratings every week, what trends. Um, I didn't really get into what, uh, why Twitter is important, but you know, somewhere down the line, I'll, unless you listen to one of my episodes on the Tsunami Faithful podcast, you know, we'll explain what that's all about. So, and I think of what it is, I mean, not to start up on a whole new topic, but uh, about Tsunami, it's one of those things where, you know, even if you're in your late twenties or whatever, you go out, you have a couple drinks or whatever, you know, however you celebrate your, your Saturday night, you know, by the time you get home, there's still, you know, no one just comes home and goes right to bed. I mean, there's something to watch on a Saturday night as soon as you get home, you know, I mean, some people, people, you know, people actually have tsunami parties. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. They actually have tsunami parties. Um, that makes sense. Makes sense. You know, and so, you know, you can still go out and have a social life and then come home and watch, you know, you can, tsunami. You can still enjoy your fandom and, and, and still have a social life, you know, and then, you know, or, or mix the both and have a tsunami party. Um, so that's, uh, I think we've pretty much wrapped up everything here. Uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? jackpot. What is it?
It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. (laughs) (laughs) Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee hee. But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I got to meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. Is this? I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. L-U-L-U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I will and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.